Hey everybody, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. It's Kate Richburg on Free Tip Friday from Beadshop.com. Sorry we were running just a touch behind as our camera was updating. So camera updates, computer updates, wait for no one. So sorry, we were just a little bit late. But here we are. We're all ready. I'm gonna, it looks like some of you are jumping on. I'm going to make sure that I can see all of your comments here. So bear with me as I pull this all up. There we are. I can see you all, I think. Let me move this over here. Do a little bit of rearranging of my table. All right, I see everybody. Great. Let me move this over. Move my camera. Let me see. Get this way. I think we're set. Alrighty. Yeah, no need to get worried. <laughs> Here we are. Alright. Good morning, Gita. I see you. Um, as Bead Shop, um, working on those comments, moderating those comments. So thank you so much, everybody, for, um, for jumping in and joining me. All right, well, we have a fun day today, a fun project today that I'm going to share with you uh, very soon. But it looks like you guys really, really loved our um, Facebook Live on Wednesday with those wire frames, right? Remember these guys that Emily uh, did some great wire wrapping in? Well, I'm going to take it a little further today and share with you some of my tips to work with these guys. Um, I think this is a really fun and great size and shape to work with. We're going to work with the drops and the rounds. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to again throw it back a little bit way back from earring designs that I liked to do. So, um, great. Well, it's great to see everyone. I am going to turn this camera around and let's get this party started, shall we? Alrighty. So, um, let me move that camera. It's going to be a little shaky, a little shaky, shaky for the moment, but you guys bear with me here. And I'm just going to swing this around. I'm getting better. I think at moving this camera so it's not so completely feeling like an earthquake. Look at that. Look. There we go. That I think looks pretty good. Alrighty. Alright. That's right. I like to push that envelope, Kathy. That is true. Yes. Oh, Cammie, the earrings that I am wearing, you bet I'll share those with you at the end of the broadcast. There are some that we did, um, some of you may recognize them. Let me move my equipment over a little bit. I am, that's right, very good call, Anna. I am wearing the Softflex earrings, our Softflex earrings. And Brandon's taking a few snaps. And of course, I will be sharing um, what we are, what the, all the materials and everything I used, I'll be sharing them on our blog a little bit later, so you guys will have all of that info. Let me straighten out the camera a little bit so we're not act looking like we're on a crooked, on a crooked hill, crooked San Francisco hill. All right, let's see. Oh, Suzanne, you are still on the road from your beautiful Finland vacation. I loved the photos that you posted. They were really, really beautiful. And it's going to inspire me to do, um, I think, a fun project with them, with one of your photos. I've been thinking about it. So it might be my weekend project. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things I'm going to use today. So you guys remember we had these really great tassel, or not tassels, some tassels are there. These really great uh, wire um, armatures, I guess I'd call them, um, are new stuff from Nun Design, which we just love, love, love. And you guys are obviously love, love, loving them as well, which is great. Um, and we have them in two shapes. We've got them in this teardrop, 
and in this round. And we didn't really talk about the size of these on Facebook Live um, this week, so I wanted to show you, or this past Wednesday, I wanted to show you, these are about two inches long, just so you have an idea about that. And the rounds are about an inch and a half. Okay, so they're a good size, not so giant that you're not going to want to make um, a um, an earring out of them, but they are big enough so that they make a good statement earring. And so these in millimeters, maybe about 35 millimeters, and maybe about 45 millimeters there as well. Okay, and the wire, if you'll remember on Emily's broadcast, she used a 24 gauge to uh, do her little wraps across. Today, <coughs> pardon me, today I'm going to use, I'm going to go down a gauge. I'm going to go down to 26 gauge. And you remember on the earring that I made, we were doing some weaving in and out, in and out. I was using that 26 gauge but I'm going to be using our 26 gauge today as well. Sorry, bear with my voice, you guys. Still, I'm almost done with this cold, so bear with me here. I'm actually going to grab <coughs> a cough drop real quick so I don't start coughing uncontrollably. Hold that thought. Look at those things. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. <coughs> let me uh, let this cough drop do its work, and I'll be right back on. I was doing, oh, and Cara's bringing me some rescue water. Perfect. Thank you, Cara. Okay. Don't you hate it when you get one of those colds that just won't go away, but I'm fine. I know, poor Kate, I'm fine. Don't you worry. <coughs> Alrighty, so now we're back. 26 gauge, and I've got it in a couple of colors. I've got a gold, I've got this brush silver, and I've got 28 gauge in shiny silver. So as you know, um, with Free Tip Friday, I always like to kind of just jump in and design on the fly because I think it's really fun. <coughs> Pardon me. I think it's really fun to kind of jump in, play around with your components and stuff, and then see where those lead you. Um, Wednesdays, of course, we're a little more polished with what we're going to do, but Free Tip Friday, you know how it is. I like to, I like to mix it up. Alrighty, I think my voice is back. I'm good. I'm feeling fine. It's just, you know, that annoying little tickle that you get in your throat, and then all of a sudden, over 100 people are watching you, and you start coughing. It's so mortifying, but we'll move, we'll move along. It's all good. So I pulled out some of our trusty bead shop little, little um, ceramic dishes there, and you can see, as some of you saw before, I've got some tassels. These are in our periwinkle color, which I love. <coughs> I've got some really nice lemon quartz faceted briolettes. So delicious. I've got our cut cube, which is fast becoming my favorite. Um, my very favorite bead next to shadows because, well, it looks exactly like our shadows. And they're the same size as like our little shadows would be. They're more of like a, maybe close to a two or three millimeter, maybe about a three millimeter bead. Um, so those work out real well. And then I got this snake olive, um, olivine um, three millimeter bead, which I like a lot. 
and I've got some, so let me start cutting these, right? Let's start cutting them up. Why not? Let's free them up. So I'm going to cut these guys. There we go. Ta-da! Look at that. A few of them want to go on the floor. Um, let's cut these guys up. These cut cubes. Uh, Ginger, I don't think Drea is on today. Sorry about that, but you can always, if you have a question for her, you can always email her at info at beadshop.com. I know Drea always monitors our customer happiness line, as we like to call it. So she can get back to you there. And, or she may jump on, you never know. <laughs> but she's not scheduled to jump on. And then I just dig, 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 dig this Duracoat Opaque Eucalyptus. You know, we ordered this color back when Emily was doing, um, was doing bead crochet. I think that's why we got it. And it's such a delicious color. Okay. Yeah, these little, um, these little bowls, I think we got them maybe at Cost Plus a million years ago. You know, you can also, if you have a restaurant supply store in your area, restaurant supply, especially in like the, the, supplies for Asian food restaurants, like for Chinese food or Thai food, they always have these cute little sauce bowls and stuff. So um, it's a good place to check for them. I know, right? I always say, as you know, the, um, the uh, beads natural habitat is the floor. So we try and be pretty good though and pick them up if they go on the floor. And I also, I think this is a bead that doesn't get a lot of love from us sometimes. Um, and it's the True 2, okay, and it's a 2 millimeter faceted fire polish round. You can see it says that right there, and um, it has, and it's, maybe it's easier, I'm going to really pan in on this so you guys can see that. See how large that hole size is? Can you see that? That would fit easily, I think, onto a 20 gauge wire even. So this is a really super, super versatile bead. Okay. So I'm going to open up this package and we'll free it up. Yes. Zoe mentioned Daiso. Yes. Daiso is a store that we have here in the San Francisco Bay area. I don't know if you guys have a Daiso where near where you live. We have one in Japantown in San Francisco. One of my favorite places to get little beads and our uh, little beads, little bowls, something little. Um, they're really, really great. I have a lot of little trays and stuff from Daiso. I always say I'm going to go into Daiso and get just one thing, and then I leave with a um, a bag full of items that I have to find homes for. Okay. So here's our true twos. We very carefully open them up and we're going to put them into our little bowl. Come on, you guys, jump out there. Alrighty. So there was a question earlier that I want to address um, that someone asked about, oh, well, I need help choosing my beads. Okay. So while I'm pulling these out, I just want to share with you a little bit of my process, what I did when I chose them. Now, as the camera was updating, um, I always grab my beads for Free Tip Friday kind of a little bit on the last minute because it forces me to make some choices without standing there in front of the beads kind of hemming and hawing and trying to decide what I'm going to use. So. The bead that I started with today, I went and I looked in our smaller beads because I knew I wanted to use smaller beads. So I started with this two millimeter cut cube. That's what I started with. That was my starting point, okay? Because I knew if I were wrapping and stuff around the smaller, um, the smaller wire, the 16 gauge wire um, of the frame, I didn't want something that would overpower it or hang too much off the sides. So that was my starting point, okay? Then I went to this lemon quartz 
And honestly, what I did was I went in and said, hey, um, I want to look and see what briolettes we have that we have enough of. So if you guys want them, we have enough for you guys to order. That's honestly what I did. And we had some of the lemon quartz. So I said this lemon quartz and this, um, this true to, or this uh, cut cube, I think they go well together. So that's what I did. Then I did the same thing with the tassels. And I said, what would be a good contrast color with those? What do we have a lot of? And I love periwinkle. So I jumped in and grabbed the periwinkle. Then I thought, well, I am going to need something that has a little bit of a sparkle. This is kind of um, an opaque bead. This is a transparent. Let me get another transparent. So that's when I went and I chose the True Two. Okay. Then from the True Two, I thought, well, that looks good, but I need another blue. And so I got, uh, and I wanted something smaller. So I went to the 11 knot seed bead in that same color family. And then I um, wanted something for my final bead choice. I wanted it to be opaque, maybe kind of, I don't know, kind of echo the true to. So I went to a three millimeter and I went to the olive. And so that was really it. That was, that was, that was my uh, thinking behind it. So when you guys are choosing your beads, <coughs> excuse me, and I think someone said something earlier about like standing in front of your fridge and choosing things for a recipe. Um, that's just kind of how you do it. Stand in front of the fridge that is your bead collection, start with one bead, and then see where that bead leads you. From here, it led me to here and here, then here, then the 11 knot, then the 3 millimeter, and just before I hit uh, go, I chose this silver daisy spacer. And that was it. There we have it. So that's, that's my bead recipe, okay? So <clears throat> let's start putting this, this earring together, shall we? I'm going to move these kind of over to the side. And let me get this guy. Yes, three millimeter snake olivine. That's what the three millimeters are. Yes. Okay. So I've got these guys here. And I'll just decide what, I don't know, what shape I want to use. Let me get in a little bit tighter so you guys can see. If you guys can see that, okay. So let's take a look at with tassels, I think that these guys would look really great hanging from the bottom of these guys. You could also hang a briolette from the bottom. These guys here, we could also hang a tassel in the middle, okay? Or a briolette in the middle. Now this is an earring design that I did a lot of um, when I was, um, when I first started making kind of, I don't know, I like to call them say something earrings, earrings that really have something to say when you wear them, okay? So let me actually start, since we use these teardrops on Wednesday, I'm going to use these round ones here. And I think what I'm going to do is actually use this teardrop. I'm going to use that teardrop in the middle, and I'm going to show you how I'd suspend that teardrop in the center. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So let me get rid of these other guys. Remove these. <clears throat> and let me get this over. And with the briolette, okay, let me double check our wire size. These briolettes have such small holes that you want to be aware. See, I'm using 24 gauge. See, that 24 gauge just doesn't want to go through. And with the 24 gauge, I don't want to force it or else I'm going to break the tip off that briolette. And these briolettes are spendy little dudes, so you don't want to break them. So I'm going to put this 24 gauge aside. And I'm going to get, this is 28 gauge. Let me see if I've got some 26 gauge. I do, here in my box. This is 
I think the right size to use. So I'll put in 26 and I'll slide this guy on and I'll make sure it fits. Okay, and you can see that, that it fits there. So I'm going to cut a piece of wire here. Okay, and um, I'm going to cut, I don't know, eight inches. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Maybe eight. Again, as it's been noted before, this kind of craft wire is fairly inexpensive, so I don't want to cut too little and then regret later that I don't have enough to work with. Let me straighten it out because, again, our wire, especially working with these briolettes, need to be as straight as I can get it. Let me do that side. Let me do this side. There we go. <coughs> and so now, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap I'm going to, I guess I'm going to go from about the center here because the wire is going to want to go in the center anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come around, I'm going to give it one wrap, and I think I want those wraps to be on the top, or going down, so I'm going to start it there, wrap again, two, and then maybe three wraps. See that? Now I'm going to hold it across and I'm going to see how that's going to look. I think it's going to look good. So I want this, especially since it's 26 gauge, you guys, I want to shore it up a little bit. So let me do that by placing some True Twos and some 11 knots on there. Okay, and this is where you kind of have to test it because I haven't pre- um, I haven't pre-measured. Yeah, I think, Jermaine, I agree with you. You just said I need to get some 26 and 28 gauge wire. I think that's a must-have in your wire arsenal, to be honest. Um, if you... You'll use it more than you think you will, honestly. I use 26 and 28 a lot. You know, we're having our discussion right now about adding some really nice, um, some really nice wires, um, semi-precious, um, semi-precious wire, metal, um, some sterling wire, and we're talking about, you know, well, what gauges are we going to get it in, and we all voted that we ha had to have it not only in larger gauges, but in the 26 and 28 gauge as well. And there was a question back earlier. Hi KC, Hi, where do you find the wire frames? All of these are coming from uh, beadshop.com, our website, and we have one of our members here, one of our viewers, Gita, she's doing all of the links and those links are going right to beadshop.com so you'll be able to find them there. Okay, so let me show you guys, this is how I start to figure out how long to make this piece. Okay, so you can see I've put on some of the beads, and I'm going to push those over, and I've just placed my briolette right there, and I can see that it looks like the center, and I do a lot of this by eyeball, eyeball it. I can see that that looks about like the center, and it looks like maybe, maybe one true two there. Does that look like about the middle? See how that true to it makes that go over a little bit further? So I think that this is going to look about right. So I'm going to take two of those off, and let's go ahead and slide that briolette on. Okay? And <clears throat> slide this over. Okay, and let's see how that looks. And let me show you here. Can you see how when I put that briolette on, it gives me a little bit of wire showing there. See that? Let me actually, you guys can see it that way. So I'm going to see, and it looks like it's not quite in the middle. See how I can look at it and I can kind of line up the point of the briolette with the loop. It's a little over, it's a little more to the left than I want it to be. So I'm going to use another 11 knot. That's why having these super teeny tiny little beads when you're creating something like this. Whoops, come back here. 
really make a difference. Okay. Let's take a look. There we go. And I think that fits. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to just mirror this from this side here to this side here. So I've done two 11 knots. Let me embiggen this just a little bit. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry, you guys. Someday I'll stop coughing. <laughs> Just have to bear with me with my coughing on this broadcast. I know it sounds it's jarring when I cough, but let me assure you that I'm just I'm just fine. I can see from the comments that everyone is talking about how it's snowing. Well, it's pretty sunny here in California. I'm looking out the window right now. Not a cloud in the sky in the Bay Area. I'm sorry. All of our sun. We could use some rain, but I'll take this sun while we've got it. And now, you guys, you can see, I'm going to come around and really put the tension on this piece, and I can see that it looks about, about right. You can see I've got a little space there, which is kind of a bummer. So maybe I'll just add... That's going to go about in the middle. You know what I'm going to do? Let's see if another 11 knot will work. And with the pair, I'll just make the pair even, you know, with the same bead count so it looks deliberate. Two here and one there, it's never ever going to be noticed. So I'm going to go with it. Okay? And I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap this around once, twice, three times, and pull everything out. So it's nice and even. And let me get my bent chain nose and clean this side up. Actually, I did one too many wraps, so I'm going to get rid of that so it's even. Okay. There we have it. So I think that looks real pretty in the center. So now I'm going to leave this wire for now because I'm going to start adding some beads around the edges and I'm just going to go ahead and use these to uh, do my wraps with. I mean I might as well so I don't have to end the wire. I'm going to use that true to I'm going to bring this around. I'm going to place it where I want it on that hoop and then bring this wire around again. Let me get really nice and tight. I use these bent chain nose all the time for helping me pull wire through. And I want to use an even number of wraps. Or, um, consistent number of wraps in between. So can you see how I did the three wraps there? I'm going to do the three wraps above. Now it's time to add another bead. So let's mix it up. Let's put our 11 knot since I've got the 11 knot coming across. And again you guys this is totally off the cuff so it may end up looking as my friend Mary likes to say like the dog's breakfast but <laughs> Hopefully it won't. But again, this is the creative process. You can't be afraid of jumping in, winding things around, testing things out, and seeing how they look. Let's add this cut cube. Let's 
Look at that. Okay, so you can see we're kind of going with a theme here. So there's my big cut cube. Well, it looks big compared to the other two beads I used, right? Two and three. Push it down, push those little wraps down so they compact nicely. And again, you don't want to smush this finding too much. You can see I'm starting to get it a little bit out of round shape. So I want to make sure that it's staying round. I don't want to be too heavy handed with this. So I need to take care as I'm wrapping. But you can see I've done a true two, an 11 knot, a cut cube. So let me reverse that pattern up here. And maybe if I look and see what's here and I'm kind of visualizing the room that I have left, maybe I want to do two of these cut cubes and then reverse it back down. That's three wraps. And if your wire's getting a little, what I like to say, wonky, let's fix it. Straighten it out with our nylon jaw plier. Get that, that one on there. And just place it where you like it. Hold it. You're the boss of that wire. There'll be a project list, um, Petrina. There will be one on our blog a little bit later after the broadcast. I'll list everything we've got and do a link to it. And then there'll be a free tip Friday link on the front page of our website a little later today. And I like that I'm doing these wraps because see how this, this guy likes to move around a little bit. But as I come around and wrap around the outside of the hoop, it's going to really um, uh, strengthen this side. It's going to really um, shore it up so it won't move around. So now that I've got these two on there, I'll go ahead and back back down. So I'll put this 11 knot and we'll, we'll um, go ahead and wrap that. So there's that one. Again, just put it where you want it. And it looks like I'm gonna end up with about the right amount of wire, which was so not planned. I started with eight inches of wire, just so you guys know. There's two wraps, and let's go three wraps around. Straighten it one more time. Straighten, straighten, straighten. And slide this on. Oh, it looks like my mom's on. Hiya, Gwen. There she is. She's saying she may bead today, which is awesome. It's always a good day to bead. Looks like I need one more, one more wrap there. There we go. Put this guy on. And flip this around. Now, regardless of how many wraps I have left to do, I think that this side, let me push everything to the side there. I think that this side is going to be done for me. Okay, So I'm just going to fill from here to here with wrapping. And I'm not going to worry about it. As long as you make the design deliberate, like I'll go ahead and mimic it on the other side of this. And see how these chain nose pliers just act like little fingers for me? Because my big old fingers feel too large to get in and out of that of that hoop. So there we have it. That's going to be my one side. Let me get that right up and close, up close and personal, so you guys can see that. And I'll just come in. I'm going to cut away this extra, just like that. Put my finger over the wire so it doesn't come up and hit me in the head. And use my trusty chain nose. Get that nice and tight, okay? And can you see this kind of side view? <clears throat> you can see the beads are kind of sticking up there like little soldiers all in a row right there. And then here they are 
sitting on the front of the armature here. Okay, So for the bottom, let's take a look and see what we might do for the bottom of this piece, shall we? Let me get it in frame though. All right, let me set this aside and let's do a little bit of designing with some of our other beads. We've got, it doesn't look too bad, you know, you just kind of have to go for it and see what happens. I've got this tassel, so I think the tassel might look kind of nice. I don't know. You can see that. We can also use, you know, I thought about putting some drops up here in what's going on up here, but I could also put some drops down here like this and this. Let me put a few of these on. Let me get Let me get this 3 millimeter. A daisy spacer. And I don't know. How about a 2 mil? Yeah, and Anna, I'm going to do a wrap all the way around the entire frame eventually. Probably off air after I'm finished. Let me get in a little bit tighter so you guys can see what that drop might look like. And let me... Maybe I want three of these. And sometimes when I don't know what to do with a drop, I'll reverse it. So I'll put my cut cube, my daisy spacer, and then my olivine. So see how they fit together like a little puzzle. Let me do one more. And this guy. Oops. That one went that one went to the floor. Let me grab another one. And a cut cube. There we have it. Okay. So there's my little drops. Alright. So how would we get these drops onto this, you ask? Well, I'm gonna show you. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I do know. Okay, so what you can do. Um, here we can just make a little loop or we can make a wire wrap loop and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the tiniest of wire wrap loops and when you're thinking about engineering something like this you guys you need to think about movement okay if the piece doesn't have movement or these drops don't have movement it's gonna be no bueno. It's not going to be good. Okay, So we have some great tutorials about wire wrapping, so I'm not going to detail it here. If you go to beadshop.com, to our website under our projects page, project page, you're going to see, there we go, um, you're going to see our skill builders page, and our skill builders have all kinds of basics, just as they say, they to build your skills, and that includes wire wrapping. Now, wire wrapping is a really, I think, important basic to have in your jewelry arsenal. So, doing a little practicing with your wire wrapping is going to take you a long way. We also have, I've done wire wrapping on Facebook Live and Free Tip Friday, so there's a whole bunch of that knowledge on there. So can you see I've got those three. Gita's on it. She's on it already. Linking that skill builder. And my number three. Now, I could have, I know some of you are thinking, well, Kate, why didn't you wire wrap this right around your armature there? Well, I don't think if I'd wire wrapped it 
I don't think I would have that much movement. Kind of thinking for it and visualizing it in my head. What I think I need in this case is I'm actually going to use a jump ring because if I'd wire wrap them right directly to this armature, they would stick out kind of funny like that, right? So I'm going to grab some jump rings and the jump rings that I want are an oval jump ring. I'm going to grab them real quick. The oval, I think, is going to be nice and sturdy. It's small enough that it's going to work for me. I'll pull out a few up here. Just like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to come in. Let's attach it. Here's that oval. It's our small oval jump ring. The reason I like the oval is also that the cut, the opening, is on the side of that oval. So when the dangle hangs down at the bottom of the oval, it's not going to pull out. Okay? So watch what I do here. Yes, and the size of these, it's the only oval jump ring we carry at the moment. I think it's our four millimeter is what it is. So let me connect these guys. I could also use these while I'm at it. Let me show you guys this. I could use this oval jump ring to connect these guys. Right here in the middle. But I've made this a little bit long, so it's not the right it's not the right thing, but it shows you that I could go ahead and use them for there. But I'm not going to take this off. We're going to use them to connect at the bottom. If I can get it off. There we go. Do this. Close this up. And notice how when I'm opening and closing these jump rings, you guys, how it's the oval ring. And I'm using two pliers. I'm using my bent chain and my regular chain nose. Yeah, these jump rings that I'm using, the ovals, they're a 20 gauge wire, so they're heavy enough to have some staying power, to have some strength, but thin enough that they're not going to overpower the design. Okay, so here are my little dangles. So let's start back with our friend here, and I'm now going to start wire wrapping down to the center here. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see what's what's happening. I'm going to cut, I liked 8 inches of wire, so I'm going to cut another 8 inches. Measure this over here off camera. 8 inches. It seems like a good, easy wire length to handle. There we go. And I'm going to start it right where this guy came to the side. So I'm going to wrap it. Notice I've got a little bit of extra wire there so I can hang on to it. That'll probably cut away later. But I'll wrap three. One, two, and three. And then since I had a true two up at the top, I'll have a true two starting there. I'm just looking at my, my piece here. I want to make sure it's nice and straight before I start wrapping it. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and put on that true two. through two and wrap that around and we put three wraps between one two 
and three. This is dead soft wire that I'm using, so the dead soft wire is really malleable for me, so I'm not working against the stiffness of a half hard wire, which is good. I just want to get this to the point. I'm going to kind of try and go a little quickly here since you saw me do this earlier. I'm going to try and go a little quickly so I can get to the point where I wrap on that drop. And let's go to a to a cut cube. And it's just about time. Let me actually before I do anything else. It actually might be time to add one of those drops on right now. So let me do it. I'm going to put my wire through that jump ring and I'm going to bring it around. And let's see how that looks. And you can see my wire is slipping around and stuff now. It's going to do that until I have all my wire and stuff on this piece. So that's okay. There's that. Now what I'm going to do, I, I want this to stay, not move around too much. So I'm going to go through my jump ring. And I'm just going to secure that in place. Can you guys see that? That's going to assure that this jump ring doesn't move around too much. It'll still have movement. I want one little extra bit of safety. And see, I think that loop looks just fine on there. Whoops, let me get it in camera frame. Sorry about that. But this loop still has movement to it. I could wire wrap these jump rings in place first if I wanted to, and then wire wrap my dangles onto them. That looks like that could happen as well. See what you do when you learn when you're designing on the fly? Now let's do three more wraps. Maybe one. Now maybe I will put a bead in the center. Two and three. I think that's three. Maybe I'll separate these drops with a cut cube. Why not, right? One and two and three. And now it's time for another drop right there. And push this all up so it's nice and tight. There we go. That's the way I want it to look. So it's time for another drop. Okay. So you can see, I'm going to continue around adding this guy here, adding that guy there, and I could add a tassel right there in the middle if I wanted to as well. Just depends on how it looks. Maybe the tassel may be a little bit of an overkill. But I think that these little drops will look really nice. And then I'll just mirror my um, design on the other side. So I'll bring this around, bring this back and underneath. But that is really all there is to this design, you guys. 26 gauge wire, a lot of wrapping around a few jump rings, and some head pins. Not too difficult. Bring this in and pull it around. So I'm excited to see what you guys might come up with using some of these ideas. Get that wire straightener in there. This wire, this nylon jaw plier, if you don't have one, get one. It's a real game changer, especially with this thin gauge. Thin gauge wire gets so mangled as you're working with it. I'll finish this second one here. There we go. All right, and so you can see there are my little there are my little drops.
Okay. Yeah, I'm glad I edited the tassel as well. And that's the thing when you're designing. You know, we call this, when my mom and I quilt together, we call this auditioning the fabric. You know, it's the same thing. We're auditioning these beads to see if they work. If they don't, that's okay. No big deal. You just take it out. There we go. I think that looks good. And then I'll have this one. There'll be room for that. And then I'll make three more on the other side. Okay. What I would do, I think the lessons learned from this piece that I just did here, this um, section, I think I might put in last. I was really kind of struggling. You saw putting it in first, it looked good, but I kept, you know, now it's a little funny. It's a little um, bent up. So I think doing my wrap all the way around first would be the right way to go with this and then I would come in and put this across this way because then I would really know the exact place to put it so I think I do that then I just want to share with you the ear wire that I'd use I'd probably use just a regular I don't know this guy here this um, what is this? Our niobium gunmetal with the three millimeter bead. I kind of like the looks of that. That brushed silver kind of goes with the brush look of these guys as well. And then you can kind of come in and place these guys around. So for the blog post, I'm going to go ahead and finish these guys up so you guys can see. Um, oh, the, the giveaway, yes, you just mentioned this, Debbie. Um, we did pull for the giveaway just before, and we posted it in the bead group, and it was Marianne, who was it, Cara? Oh, Marianne Switlinger. She was the winner for our um, TiaraCast giveaway um, in our bead table group. So, um, Marianne, we posted, and if you're watching, congratulations. And we'll get that we'll get that out for you. Um, okay, and we'll see. I could also add. Um, we could do a double, a double dangle for this briolette there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to finish wrapping that around, um, and I um, it'll really shore this side up here. So I think it was a fun earring project. It is a little kind of little 70s, a little boho, continuing on that boho phase. We could also do it with these drops. I think this would look really nice going across this way as well. So I'd really uh, like to see what you guys do with this project and process. Well, I'm going to turn the camera around because I promised you guys a peek at my earrings. And then, uh, then we'll go from there. I'm going to turn this around. So it's a little, a little there we go, and here I am. Look at that. I'm getting better at moving this camera, I'm telling you. I'll share with you what I'm wearing. What are you wearing? It's like the red carpet, right? This is our uh, soft flex earring, and you guys have, oh, let me get this a little bit bigger. Look at, oh, I was a little close. Sorry. Sorry. Too close. Sorry about that. I'm coming at you really, really live and in person. Um, these are our soft flex earrings that dangle, kind of two strands of soft flex. They're kind of fun. They're my favorite uh, colorway from these guys. I like them a lot. And then uh, I'm, as Gita pointed out earlier, uh, we have a new project out that shows all of our goddess bracelets, and it's right on the front page of our website right now. But if you're watching this later and it's not on the front page, you can go right to our projects and find the goddess bracelets here. And this goddess bracelet also utilizes these little uh, dangle um, tassels, which I love. So those are, those are what are adorning me this afternoon. I'll put this earring back in. I love these guys so much. Um, there was a quick question uh, that I did want to answer here. Do I use odd numbers when I make dangles? Usually, because usually I like one of those dangles to sit maybe in the middle, so like if this were, how many dangles are on here? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one has seven here, so that odd number, so there's one here in the middle. Um, and this also, this design, you could just wire wrap that. That would go nicely on this uh, wire armature as well. Those would work nicely. So I'm excited to see what you guys, um, what you guys come up with. But yeah, look at these. I think they look pretty good like that. You could just translate this design right onto that teardrop. And you could also um, use these just as pendants as well. You could do just a single guy and do a nice big drop maybe here and then string from this loop here and here. So um, yeah, it really depends. Use your creativity, you guys. That's what Free Tip Friday is all about, using your creativity. All right, so um, next week, uh, we have a fun project. Emily and I are continuing our wire odyssey. We're going to be using some heavy gauge wire, 16 gauge to be exact, and we're going to be making a cool bracelet with that. And then the following week, Janice will be back with a brand new project that I know you guys are going to love. So, um, that is it for Free Tip Friday today. You guys go and enjoy the weekend. Um, go ahead and if you haven't gone to our bead shop group on Facebook, The Bead Table, you can go ahead and search that. Um, you can answer some questions to join. We'd love to see you over there because we've got so many great projects and stuff that people are posting. So we love it. We love it. Love it. So if you want to join us, come on over to that Facebook group. We'll be glad to have you. All right. Well, that'll do it for me for this free tip Friday, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Take a look for it on the blog. In a few hours, you'll see the completed piece along with a materials list. It's been great to have you. Stay creative and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you soon.